guys, Ash here, coming at you today from Raid Shadow Legends. Let's learn more about Awakening. Uh, this is the core mechanics of Awakening. This is actually a video that is not even published yet on Raid Shadow Legends, so we're going to go ahead and watch it together, guys, and really our first reactions on all of the new Awakening mechanics. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'll also have this video linked for you guys in the show notes below. Hey, everyone, and welcome to a new update preview episode. Today, we're going to talk about Awakening, diving a little deeper into some of the things we didn't have time for in our most recent What's Next video. We're also working on a second video covering the Iron Twins Fortress, the boss's skills, and highlighting some tactics and strategies to help take the twins down. But right now, we're focusing on Awakening itself. I can't wait for this update, FYI. Sorry for being overly giddy about something I don't know about yet, totally, but uh, it looks pretty cool to me. Let's start with the basics. Awakening unlocks at level 42 and is kind of like a mixture of Ascension and Masteries. The Awakening part itself is similar to Ascension. You awaken your champions star by star to make them stronger. In fact, one of the only real rules for Awakening is that you can't awaken a champion to a higher Awakening level than their Ascension level. So, you awaken them, then what? Here's where you'll find the similarity to Masteries. Once you awaken a champion, you can choose a blessing for them. These are so right on the skills tab, we see a new blessing area. I, I know a lot of the early feedback on this whole feature was super overwhelming, really complicated. So we're just going to try to take it kind of, you know, step by step, element by element, and find out where this stuff even is inside the game, right? These are like super powered passive skills that can completely transform how you use a champion. And you can say, okay, this is cool. They look at this. So you go blessings over here and it opens up this entire uh, other menu on the left hand side. Light, dark, war, chaos. You can choose also a, a locked one over here. And you can see some of the blessings for Nethril in this example. Obviously, a legendary champion has more blessing options. You're also seeing the level here, I noticed, on each of his skills A1, A2, and A3. Unlocking new levels of potential or altering what they do entirely. Each blessing belongs to a specific divinity. For now, there are four. Light, Dark, War, and Chaos. As soon as you awaken a champion, you get to pick any blessing you want. No questions asked. Well, within reason. Like champions, blessings have rarities. So rare champions can only get rare blessings. Epic champions can choose rare or epic blessings. And legendary champions have access to everything. But still, once you've awakened a champion, you don't have to do anything else to actually unlock their available blessings. However, so whenever this champion attacks, each hit has a chance to place a smite debuff for two turns. So we have a new debuff as well here, guys. Champions under smite debuff uh, will be hit by a meteorite when they use. So it looks like all of these or most of these, like that Grim Reaper and stuff, are going to be like new debuffs or new whatever, you know. Champions under smite debuff will be hit by a meteorite when they use an active skill. The meteorite inflicts damage equal to 25% of the affected champion's max HP and will also inflict damage to all other champions equal to 5% of their max HP. The debuff disappears after the meteorites hit. Uh, only one snipe debuff can be active per team at any point. Cannot be removed, blocked, resisted, or transferred. I mean, that seems insane. You can make all the blessings stronger by awakening your champion to higher levels. Every blessing gets better as a champion's awakening level increases from improving the stat bonuses to unlocking entirely new effects and abilities. The best part? Soul Reap. When the champion hits an enemy target and decreases their, their HP to a certain threshold, a Reaper will, uh, that's the Reaper dude we talked about, right? Uh, will appear extra damage on the target uh, for AoE attacks. Each target has their HP reduced by a threshold in the attack. Uh, will be visited by the Reaper. The Reaper will ignore defense as well as all damage reduction skills, effects, and buffs. Wow. It's all tied to your champion's awakening level. You don't have to upgrade each blessing individually. If you have a champion at level five of awakening, they'll get the level five benefits of any blessing they choose. I mean, you guys can see all of these, you know, chaos damage increases on level one, defense plus 200 on level two, damage increases again, HP, resist, etc. Simple. You can also swap blessings at any time. Just like Masteries, the first change is completely free, but after that, it's gonna cost you some gems. You can change to any blessing available from any divinity, but switching blessings within the same divinity will be slightly cheaper than- You can see the, uh, the gem cost here, pretty pricey to switch blessings, 300 here. Changing their divinity entirely. 
you know there's going to be a lot of costs somewhere here, right? I'm just, <laughs> I'm being vigilant. I have my eyes out. I have my eyes now, looking out for Let's it. have a look at some of the blessings themselves, starting with one of our coolest blessings. The sheep. Polymorph. This is a legendary blessing from the Chaos Divinity, and it does deliver on the Chaos front. Dude! <laughs> Whenever any enemy places a debuff on a champion with this blessing, or steal- 5% of placing a sheep debuff. Uh, and then we get all the way to 20% of placing a sheep debuff, uh, plus 10 speed. Also <laughs> removes one of their buffs, there's a chance they'll receive a little debuff themselves. Only it's not a normal debuff, like an attack or defense decrease. They're going to get turned into a sheep and lose access to every single one of their skills. There's only a 5% chance of this happening at level 1, but if your champion is fully awakened all the way to level 6, you're going to have a 20% chance of turning potentially any champion So it's a two-turn sheep debuff. <laughs> into a sheep for two turns. And if you're wondering what life as a sheep is like, well, any champ that's been sheepified will only be able to use a single sheep skill. They'll charge forward, attack one enemy, and uh, that's it. But they're a sheep, <laughs> so herd mentality comes into play. Whenever one sheep attacks, all the others will join the herd. The sheep ally attack? <laughs> herd and attack too. Is this ridiculous or is it just me? <laughs> Getting turned into a sheep can basically take a champion out of the game for two whole turns, but it's not all bad. Every time you attack as a sheep, there's a 50% chance of removing the debuff and getting turned back into champion form again. And whenever you get rid of the sheep- So a little kind of fear, true fear mechanic built into polymorph? Debuff, whether it expires or you lose all your HP as a sheep, you'll return to champion form at 50% HP, no matter how much HP you had before you got sheeped. It's a fun blessing, an even more fun debuff, and we can't wait to see what you do with it. So, that's a legendary blessing, but other champions have access to a lot of awesome blessings too. Survival Instinct is a rare blessing from the Chaos Divinity that can really turn Rare blessing, now we're talking. ...a situation on its head. When an enemy uses a skill that places, spreads, or transfers a debuff onto a champion with this blessing, it's going to boost that champion's turn meter. It's an amazing blessing to make your champions interrupt your opponent's turn order and ruin their day. I actually really like this. Hey, and here's another one. Carapace decreases the damage a champion takes while under a bunch of crowd control debuffs, like stun, freeze, fear, or even petrification. On top of that, it also provides some sizable boosts to the champion's HP, resistance, and speed, making them far better equipped to make it through enemy stun locks in the arena or in those tough boss battles. And remember, these Eh, not bad, but not as good as the other ones. Last two blessings are rare, so it's not just the top tier champions that will be getting some serious benefits from blessings. All right, we've taken a detailed look at three blessings from the Chaos Divinity, but let's quickly highlight a few blessings from the other divinities too, starting with the War Divinity. Life Harvest increases the champion's turn meter whenever an enemy is revived and destroys a portion of that enemy's max HP for good measure, making them weaker every time. Chainbreaker helps champions break free from crowd control. The start of this champion's turn has a chance of removing any of the CCD bus plays uh, on this champion. Only activates this champion is under any of these debuffs. Three turn cooldown. Okay. Debuffs, commanding presence boosts your team's aura, and hero's soul boosts- Strengthen your team's aura. If multiple champions on the same team have the commanding presence, only one will work. Uh, really interesting. So 7.5 on a three star. Let's see what that goes to. So champions damage again. Uh, oh, they went to the other one. Forget it. <laughs> bosses, according to the number of enemies in battle. I want to guess 10% extra on the aura. Interesting. It'll be huge for the spider's den. Next up. Great for like speed teams in the arena too. Light divinity, the do-gooders. The lightning cage blessing protects your buffs and boosts your damage with lightning balls. Heaven cast makes your default skill ignore some of your enemy's resistance, which is great for those with key debuffs on their first skill. And here's one of my favorites. Miracle Heal helps recover some destroyed HP whenever the Blessed Champion heals. Excellent for bringing into Hydra battles. And finally, the Dark Divinity. As you'd expect, they're not manipulating rainbows. Take Ward of the Fallen. It gives you... Starts each round with a number of bone armor stacks. Each bone armor stack decreases the damage the recipient receives from a single hit, then disappears. A champion with the maximum of three bone stack stacks at a time uh, deals damage, uh, bonus damage, excuse me, to each enemy hit by this champion. The number of times bonus damage is inflicted on each enemy is equal to the number of dead allies. Uh, bonus damage is proportional to this champion's attack. Adds one bone armor stack for each instance of bone damage. 
Special bone armor to protect you from attacks, then gives you more as your allies perish around you. At the highest level, you'll even summon undead skeletons to charge at your enemies. It's awesome. The lethal dose blessing then increases the damage you deal from poison. That's kind of sick. Some debuffs in the arena and ignores some of the. Something about me, I, I love everything that you're summoning something. The Grim Reaper, the skeletons, even sheep. The enemy's resistance while you're at it. If that doesn't sound painful enough, the cruelty. Increase the damage received from poison debuffs. Man, it's going to be so nasty. Blessing you know? destroys some of your enemy's defense, making them far, far easier to hurt. All right, that's a super quick fly through of a few of the. Some insane. This is going to be a game changer in terms of just uh, arena, right? All this stuff. Coolest blessings. Keep an eye on our social channels for more. Now you know why you want to awaken your champion. Those little skeletons didn't do a ton of damage, though, but it's pretty cool, though, you know? Let's talk about how. It all starts here at the Altar of Souls. Well, kind of. It actually starts at the Iron Twins Fortress. That's where you'll beat the Iron Twins to earn the soul coins you'll need to start the awakening process. But we're making- You hate to see it. You hate to see energy and keys. What? A dedicated video on the Twins later, so we'll ignore them for now. Now, imagine, you're the best. You crush the Iron Twins. You've got all the soul coins in the world. Time to get your hands on champion souls and awaken some champions. To start, let's recap a few rules. Only rare, epic, and legendary champions can be awakened, and each champion needs their own souls. You can't awaken Venus with Valkyrie souls, for example. Another big thing to remember is that your ascension level matters for awakening. Champions can't be awakened to a higher level than their current ascension level. To make it easy to track, your awakening level is indicated with a fashionable red color. Okay, so, souls. Pretty self-explanatory there. You need the specific champion's uh, souls. Uh, there's also a way to kind of change those in as well. I'm sure you're going to mention that in a bit. Uh, and then they have to be ascended first, and then they can be, to those star levels, uh, could be uh, souls. There are two types of souls. Perfect souls and... Awakened. And split souls. Perfect souls let you awaken your champion to the exact level indicated by the number of stars they have without any extra steps or requirements. If you're lucky enough to find a six-star perfect soul for Valkyrie, you can fully awaken her in a single step. Dang, I bet that's going to cost a lot of money. Split souls. Split souls, on the other hand, awaken your champions one level at a time. For example, if you find a five-star split soul, you'll only be able to use that on champions that have already reached level four of awakening. Now let's talk about getting those souls. Perfect souls are the most flexible and powerful, so you'll want to get your hands on as many of these as possible. The main way is by summoning them with soul stones, which always gives you perfect souls. And to get soul stones, you'll need to head to the Mystic Market and use the soul coins you've earned from beating the Iron Twins. There are three... So what did we get from that last uh, Iron Twin? We got like 2,000 of these points or so. So let's go back to the market and really... Okay. So... Okay, obviously there's going to be different difficulties, different rarities here on these, but it's going to cost us a thousand of these for the Immortal Soul Stones and the Eternal Soul Stones. A thousand of the most rare here. And use the Soul Coins you've earned from beating the Iron Twins. There are three Soul Stone types, Mortal, Immortal, Eternal. The better the Soul Stone, the better your chances of receiving top... So Mortal is Rare Epic Legendaries, Awakening Levels 1 to 6, 3 to 6, and 5 to 6 here on Immortal and Eternal. Okay. Tier souls, meaning higher level souls for higher rarity champions. You can see the breakdown on screen right now. Not a perfect analogy, but kind of think of it like uh, different uh, rarities of potions when you're ascending your champions. Now, summoning souls using soul stones requires silver in addition to the soul stones themselves, and the process is similar to su of course it does. summoning champions from shards, so you should get used to it in no time. As an added bonus here, you'll be able to constantly upgrade your stockpiles of soul coins through using soul stones. For example, if you use 10 mortal soul stones, you'll receive 200 immortal soul coins. You can also get some eternal soul coins by using immortal soul stones. It's a nice easy ladder that means you can get high tier soul stones just for summoning souls. But that's not all. As you know, there are hundreds of champions in raid, and getting the right soul for the right champion sounds like it could take a while. So we've got something to help speed that process up. Introducing the wish list. You'll get to choose nine champions to add to your list. Then your odds of summoning perfect souls for those champions from soul stones will be doubled. Simple. Okay, so that's a really cool feature. I, I can't lie. I like it. However, a double chance on three champions per rarity. We know from 10 time events, there's like a thousand champions in this game. So it's going to be very, very, very far from a guarantee that you'll actually be getting those champions. No strings attached. 
So that covers perfect soles, but what about split soles? You can get split soles from the sole merchant, but instead of using sole stones, you'll be exchanging sole essence. You can either find sole essence. See, this is where it gets kind of confusing because there's so many new you know, resources added to this. By raiding the Iron Twins Fortress or by buying it with soul coins. Fortunately, the advantage of the soul merchant is that you get to pick and choose which souls you want. The merchant has souls of every level and rarity, but the merchant's stock changes all the time. You'll need to stop by regularly and see what's in stock. I like the merchant. To make it even more appealing, the merchant likes to make sure they have what you're looking for, so you'll never get a split soul that's of a lower level than what you need. For example, if you have a Valkyrie at level 3 of Awakening, the next split soul you see for Valkyrie will be level 4. And if a champion hasn't been awakened at all, you might even see a few level 1 perfect souls as well. Bottom line, when it comes to the soul merchant, make sure you check in regularly to catch the souls you need. Those are all the ways to get souls, but once you have them, you'll need to know where to access them. This one's easy. Head to your soul collection. It functions pretty much the same as your champion's collection, where you can expand it if you need more slots. Oh, and one big thing to remember. You can always sell any souls you don't want to get some more soul coins. This way, nothing's wasted, and you get to start the hunt for souls again. All right, guys, that is it. What do you think of this? I think that from all the comments that I've seen so far, the majority of you guys, myself included, are pretty hyped about this update, right? I mean, uh, just something fresh, something new to the game. It really does add another dynamic, another level of strategy to the game. I know there's some haters out there, you know, not, this is not the feature that they necessarily wanted added to the game. And I totally get that, obviously, to each his or her own in terms of their opinion. But for me... I don't know. Maybe I'm a sucker, but this is exciting. I can't wait to try out different uh, combinations and different ways of building a champion. What this does is it takes a, a champion and allows you so many different almost skill trees or paths to take them beyond what we currently have available in the game. And I'm excited to try out different combinations. What about you guys? Uh, I have to say that the overall, you know, pay to winniness, if you will, of this feature seems to me kind of medium, right? I'm sure they're going to be throwing all kinds of soul stone offers and getting those perfect souls and, and, you know, taking them all the way to max. I'm sure that's going to be incredibly rare. So it's probably going to be a grind like everything else in this game, either your time or your money. But otherwise, I'm cautiously optimistic. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for, so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.